September 20th, and it's about 6 o'clock right now, evening. I mentioned what happened when police arrested me prior to my attempt to go to a reporter with a story. After The reason why I didn't contact the reporter from the Wenatchee world after I was released from jail is because I was intimidated because what they had done to me basically worked. The FBI and the police worked together. I knew that the FBI was involved. I knew that no judge and no law enforcement professional in their right mind would do such a thing unless they felt they had the FBI backing them in some way. So basically I was intimidated to from going to the media and telling my story by a false arrest and then an imprisonment when I hadn't done anything wrong. So I actually, to be honest, I made no attempt whatsoever to try to contact the reporter after that. I My free speech was sufficiently quashed because of what they had done to me. I, um, I was also uh, pregnant at the time, and instead of going to a reporter, going back to that reporter, and trying to have the story, um, have the story told, instead I was being forced to deal with this lawyer who was trying to blackmail me into taking a plea bargain when I hadn't done anything wrong. Really not sure why they, some a group was trying so hard to have me take this plea bargain. Honestly, I think that there are only two options. Number one is that <clears throat> the group that had wanted to make me look criminal really wanted something like that to reflect on my record because that, that would that would meet the end um, to the means or whatever. So the only other option that I can think of at all, and I mean, believe me, I've thought of just about everything, is I've considered the possibility that since the United States was trying to use me from such a young age and then destroying records and then implanting me and then trying to make me look like a criminal, I guess it is extremely remotely possible that someone had an idea to make me out to be a criminal and then they were going to use me. Um, I, I mean, I'm not sure use me in a criminal sense, like what, like um, like fast and furious, you know, I, I suddenly have this criminal looking record so then it makes me credible to the people that that some government person wants me to get close to. I really have no idea. That seems like a very far, far out, far stretched idea to me. I think that the main reason that what happened happened is because people really wanted me to, truly wanted me to sound bad. So I was having to deal with that and, and then at the same time, I was having to look for prenatal care because they confirmed that I was pregnant when I was in jail. And at that point, I was looking for not just prenatal care, but normal migraine treatment, treatment, normal treatment for my migraines. And one hospital did get in trouble, which I felt very good about. I mean, I felt a small sense of satisfaction that they got in trouble because after repeatedly refusing to treat my migraines, they had their status, they had a, um, hospitals and medical facilities get ranked according to what their abilities are and what they're qualified to do. And they get ranked, you know, at certain levels. I, I can't remember how it works, but if you're, for example, a, a level five hospital, it means that you can handle the worst crisis imaginable and the biggest emergencies. Everything from head traumas to neck injuries to complicated surgeries, and you name it. Then 
a step down from that would be another level, which is, you know, you can handle most complicated things, but if it goes into head injuries, you have to life, you're required by law to life flight the patient to a different hospital. So they lost their status as a higher level hospital after what they were doing with me. And the reason was that somebody investigated and said that you don't have enough neurologists and people who understand what um, head injuries and migraines and that kind of thing, how to determine that, that sort of an injury. So we're requiring that you life flight anybody with that kind of thing. So they, they did get dropped down a grade. However, nobody compensated me for what was going on. I mean, I, I wasn't, my life was not, it wasn't my choice to be a walking guinea pig and a walking radar of injustice. And the very few good things that I saw come out of it, such as a hospital getting dropped down a grade rightfully, that was few and far between. I received absolutely zero benefit from pretty much anything that happened. I meant most of what happened to me was just malicious. It ruined my life. It was destructive. So, so basically, getting prenatal care I thought was going to be a challenge, and I didn't want, want to go to really to any of the normal doctors, but I thought I had to have an OBGYN, a regular doctor. So I went to this one clinic, and I knew I needed migraine treatment if it came up, and the doctor that I got was the director for this federally funded clinic, Dr. Malcolm Butler. He seemed to be agreeable to, to begin with. He treated me, you know, within reason, and didn't look down on me because I had migraines. And most likely, if he was the director of a federally funded clinic, it's because he and, and his father was on some sort of board for the University of Washington, which is a hospital, which is a very experimental hospital, as in the experiment on human beings there. I think that it's, it's possible that he knew what, had, um, what was done to me in 1995 with being implanted with these microchips. And so I think... Basically, it was really up to the decision of a federal employee who knew what happened to me. It was up to them on how they wanted to treat me a lot of times. They could pretend like nothing was wrong with me and I was just crazy and use everything that they knew against me. Or they could use what they knew happened to me and, and validate me and treat me like somebody who did have knowledge of what was going on and not hold that against me in a punitive way. However, not once did anybody ever disclose to me any information that would have had me think that I was tar being targeted by the federal government in any way. So that was a great disservice to me because it left me vulnerable to being at the mercy of a lot of different kinds of federal employees and some who were some people who were not even federal employees but they just heard through a corrupt person what had happened and then it spreads to their gang or their group or their mob or whatever and and I was then being treated badly and somehow all of a sudden a lot of people were um, had knowledge of, of things that were happening to me and why, and I, I had no idea. So I was trying to get this prenatal care. I got um, connected to Malcolm Butler. And I also was talking to, um, I decided I wanted a midwife, so I thought I might try that too and maybe use them in conjunction, or just have the midwife deliver my baby and have sort of my prenatal care before I had the baby monitored by Dr. Malcolm Butler. 
because initially I, I planned to have a natural, non-drug home birth. So for somebody who's been being accused of being a drug seeker, um, I was going the most painful route about having my own child because I didn't care about drugs. I cared about the health of my, my unborn baby and I'd always cared about my own health as well. So in addition to this, at that time, while I was pregnant, I didn't, I didn't do a ton of work on it, but I did go to counseling. And I had a woman bring up the fact that what had happened to me with the FBI agents was not a simple misconduct problem. It was sexual assault and break and entry. And when she read to me these definitions, I thought, no, it can't be true. I mean, they, did they really break laws? And when she read the definitions to me, she says, well, based on what you just told me, that's what happened. So she read it to me, and, and it was true. The definition for sexual harassment, which the FBI hadn't been willing to disclose to me, it met everything that I was telling her and that I told them, and my story hadn't ever changed. I just didn't know what, it, you know, what to call it. And I didn't know that they had actually broken laws. I, I was starting to, I mean, I did think that they had possibly something to do with hate crime, but, or my litigation, or people involved in it, the litigation, but I had no idea that, I really had no idea that they had committed crimes against me, because I didn't know what the laws were. So she actually brought this up at, a, at the women's domestic help place. And she acted as an advocate for me. But, you know, eventually it's like somebody got squeezed into almost every position that they thought I might potentially go to. And, you know, trying to take the bull by the horns and steer the organization in a direction that was always um, going right towards my gut, basically. Always aiming for where they thought it would hurt me the most and impale me the best, you know, in the eyes of the public and anyone else who might be looking in to check on something. So during this time with my son, my entire objective was to fill, to fill my surroundings with music, stories, um, like rhymes and things, rhyming sounds, interesting sounds, um, comedy, and very good all organic food. It was the one time that I restricted myself. I wasn't vegan or vegetarian, but I restricted myself to only eating all organic food while I was nurturing this unborn life in 